Hello challengers, Dr. Naveen here. So in this video, I'll be discussing two important effects from thyroid physiology. That is jord Bezdo effect and also wolf Chaikov effect. So what are these two effects? To understand this, let me give you a brief details about the thyroid hormone biosynthesis. We do have a detailed video on uh, the thyroid function test in M videos, but here I am only giving you a gist of the thyroid hormone biosynthesis because understanding this will help you in clear understanding of the Jade Bisdo effect and Wolchaikov effect. Here, as you can see, uh, there are few steps in thyroid hormone biosynthesis. First thing is, first and foremost, very important thing is thyroid hormone is made up of iodine thyroxine t3 and t4 the main ingredient is iodine so the entry that uptake and entry of iodine into the cell is very important and this is with the help of sodium iodide symport and this is stimulated by tsh okay with the help of tsh there is entry of iodine into it by action of the tsh uh, receptor after entry iodine is oxidized with the help of tpo that is thyroid peroxidase enzyme okay iodine is oxidized with the help of thyro peroxidase peroxidase enzyme into an active form and this step is known as very important organification okay this step is known as organification this is followed by conversion of iodine to mit dit that is mono iodotyrosine uh, diiodotyrosine we call it as coupling so this coupling reaction is also catalyzed by the enzyme, the same enzyme, thyroperoxidase. So entry followed by organification, followed by coupling. Okay. So this coupling, uh, coupling also occurs between MIT plus DIT, which will give rise to T3, DIT, DIT unites to form T4, all this. So these are the few steps which are important in synthesis of thyroid. But now you see. Whenever, just follow this, iodine plays a crucial role in the synthesis of thyroid hormones. When iodine is given in excess, when iodine is given not in regular forms, in excess forms, there are two possibilities that can occur. The iodine induced, iodine induced hyperthyroidism. So there are two effects by consumption of excess iodine. Iodine induced hypothyroidism. Let's consider there is a normal patient. Normal person, not patient. There is a normal person. In a normal person, whenever excess iodine is consumed, okay, whenever excess iodine is consumed, due to negative feedback mechanism, Due to negative feedback mechanism, what happens due to the negative feedback mechanism in a normal person, iodine entry does not occur inside. Iodine entry does not occur inside the cell. This is mediated by the TSH, thyroid, uh, 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 TSH hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone, negative feedback. So excess iodine in a normal person can lead to hypothyroidism because iodine entry is getting inhibited because of the action of teeth. This is excess, not usual amounts. So in a normal person, you can see iodine induced hypothyroidism because this is autoregulatory. But as the concentration of iodine decreases inside the thyroid cell, this negative feedback goes back. Okay, so it abolishes as because it continues. So maybe within next 10 days this normal person can have a phenomenon known as escape phenomenon please remember this keyword what is this escape phenomenon what happens in escape phenomenon uh, usually this iodine induced hypothyroidism when iodine is given in excess is a immediate response and this is seen for next 10 days but this is followed by escape phenomenon escape phenomenon is there is resumption of iodine consumption resumption of organification of the iodine this resumption occurs in a normal person but this escape phenomenon 
does not occur in patients with Graves' disease. Okay, autonomous uh, because TSH response is negative feedback positive. Nothing is there in these patients. These are autonomous self-secreting disease. So that's the reason in Graves' disease, if you give excess iodine, this suppression continues, and Whenever there is a thyroid storm in the body, excess thyroid in the body, I think we can use excess iodine to control this, right? So this is the clinical significance of this iodine induced hypothyroidism. Let me revise it again. When iodine is given in excess no normal persons, you will see some kind of hypothyroidism followed by escape phenomenon. But when iodine is given in excess quantities in a patient with Graves disease, there will be iodine induced hypothyroidism because of because of decreased entry of iodine and also because of one more thing, one more very important thing. Why this decrease occurs? Because organification of iodine gets affected because when you give more and more iodine, if something enters inside, what happens? Self-regulatory mechanism is gone. In a normal person, you will have a self-regulatory mechanism. But in Graves' disease, this TSH control is gone. More and more iodine enters into the body. The organification of the iodine gets affected here. Okay, so this use of excess thyroid in case of thyroid storm, this effect is known as wolf chaikov effect. So now tell me what is wolf chaikov effect when iodine is given in excess, it induces hypothyroidism and it can be clinically used in patients with thyroid storm because iodine induces hypothyroidism. So this hyperthyroid crisis cases can be managed well with this wolf chaikov effect. Come back to the other parameter. Can iodine cause hyperthyroidism? This is my question. Can iodine cause hyperthyroidism? For example, let's take a patient with endemic goiter. Already this person is living in an iodine deficiency area like Kashmir belt. The person is living there. So there the iodine quantity in uh, food and salt is very low. So that's the reason the person is having a goiter that is iodine deficiency. For this patient, if you suddenly give iodine, the thyroid gland will start synthesizing excess hormones. This can induce hyperthyroidism. But this response is not immediate. Not immediate. So this response is not immediate. This response might take 2 to 12 weeks to develop. Okay. And as I told you, this is seen in patients with endemic goiter. And this can also be possible with any patient with Graves disease initially. So that's the reason. Whenever you want to treat a patient with Graves disease, initially if you want to give iodine, you might expect hyperthyroidism followed by hypothyroidism. Hyperthyroidism followed by hypothyroidism. The similar case is with amiodarone. Amiodarone is also an iodine containing, iodine containing drug, antiarrhythmic drug. Initially because of the iodine supplementation, there will be increase in the hyperthyroid levels. Later on, this wolf of effect takes place leading to iodine induced hypothyroidism. This is very important question. Amiodarone causes both jod based effect and wolf type. Initially jod based that is initially hyperthyroidism followed by hypothyroidism. That's the reason when you read side effects of amiodarone in antiarrhythmic drugs, they'll give both hyper and hypothyroidism. You will now after this video, you will understand why these two effects are seen. Initially iodine causes hyperthyroidism, later on autoregulatory mechanism takes in place causing hypothyroidism. Okay, and the same holds true for toxic multinodular goiter cases or toxic adenoma cases also you will see this jod based effect so what is your take home from this video it is very important for you to understand that jod based effect is not seen in normal patients but it is whole type of effect which can be seen in normal patients okay and clinical significance of whole type of effect is it can be used in um, thyrotoxicosis that is thyroid storm okay the thyroid storm it can be used and one more thing is this jod based effect takes time for 12 to 2 to 12 weeks but this is immediate response within 10 days followed by escape phenomenon so escape phenomenon is seen in wolf effect so these are the few important points regarding jod based effect and wolf strike of effect